next slide. Now I want to talk about the the threat landscape, uh, secure cybersecurity trends. Okay, and this is important as I stated in the beginning of this webcast is to understand what kind of threats are there, are, are, are out there. Okay, so now. We're talking about malware. malware. Malware is a malicious software that can, once it's installed on a computer, can do many things. Can allow uh, key logging, so whatever you type on the keyboard will be able to save it in a file and send it out, out there. Or can take a, um, um, computer pictures and send them out there. Or can open the microphone or camera and listen and do and show um, to, the, to the hacker whatever you are, uh, you're doing on the computer. So this is a major, major threat. Now within that malware, we have the ransomware because it, it allows you, to, it allows the attacker to encrypt information, but also uh, it has also some, some uh, leftovers, I would say. So if you remove the ransomware, you'll see leftover with, a, with a, a, a malicious software will be able to spy on you. Now, we see the trend the past five, five years. Uh, so every year we have uh, about an increase of 100 million uh, different types of uh, malwares. And this is only from AVSAT. This is only one antivirus software company. And this is, as you see, it's linear, but it, it's expo exponential, right? Now, based on the research that I did recently, you have new malware, pieces of malware, 274,000 new pieces of malware every day. This is a lot. And I'm going to take you to the next slide. And this is comes from uh, Webroot. Webroot is a AV solution, antivirus solution. And this is what they say. They say 94% of all malware is unique to the Ancelgen endpoint. So now traditional signatures are useless. So here's the explanation how AV works. AV works in a way that once the, the company finds a, a threat, they will develop the antidote, they will generate a signature, and that signature will send to each endpoint. Now, it takes time to develop the, this uh, signature, and it takes more time also to spread it all over all the, the entire uh, endpoint. So it takes time. Now, it's enough one click that you get on the email, for instance, if it's a phishing, right? If it's a phishing through email, or if you get it as a link on, uh, on, a, on email, or maybe you get it a link on uh, social media. So one click, and you got uh, this malware uh, on your computer. And the endpoint won't be able to recognize it because there's no signature, so there's no detection, right? So there's no remediation, no detection, end of story. 90% of successful data breaches caused by user error. And this is actually related to the ransomware attacks. Uh, if you don't train, this is related to Sammy's question earlier, that when you want to prevent a, a ransomware, for instance, as this was your question, you need to train your employees. And one of the things is to let them know that you have this policy and they need to know what to do and specifically not what to do. And you need to train them besides they, they, them signing on this document. So we'll start with the ransomware, and this is a related to uh, user training, right? In this ML, uh, as you can see, it says FedEx package, right? And then how you can spot it, if you look at the email and the domain after the ad sign, you see it's not coming from FedEx. So, so you know right away it's a, it's a phishing attack. There's something, there's attachment. FedEx won't send you uh, UPS won't send you any attachment. They're going to send you an email update about the status of the delivery of the package. They're not going to send you uh, an email with an attachment. It doesn't happen. Now, after you open the attachment, this is what's behind that uh, uh, zip file. You have a JavaScript. Now, this JavaScript only needs, doesn't need special software. It just needs the, the web browser just to render itself. Once it executes, it will download, uh, download more malicious software that needed in order to continue the, uh, the attack. Now, this is a, a GUI, graphic user interface of uh, WannaCry. It gives you the instructions just for you to know how to spot a, a ransomware, for instance. 
So it tells the, the, the person, the user, okay, this is, you have the time to buy Bitcoins and send it to us. This is for you to know. The next uh, threat, it's called Miner Malware. Now, Miner is a, is a software, malicious software that basically uses your computer uh, CPU cycles and memory to generate Bitcoins, cryptocurrency. So now they're shifting, instead of using ransomware, they are shifting to different, different venues. They are using your computer as a resource to generate Bitcoins. Now what happened to you, to your computer, become very slow, becomes very slow, right? Then you cannot operate, you cannot do anything. You can do other things, but in this case, it does uh, cryptocurrency mining. Now in the next slide, this is interesting. This is even a better way how to mine uh, Bitcoins or cryptocurrency is to use your web browser. Now the bad news is it doesn't need any, any software installation. You just visit the website and you get your computer to mine uh, cryptocurrency. How you can detect it? If you see the CPU utilization, very high. Memory is also getting very high. You will see spikes the computer and the fan of the computer, the CPU fan, will spin like crazy because they're trying to cool down the CPU because it's getting warm, because it's been used uh, for um, calculation in order to generate the crypto cryptocurrency blocks. The next danger is IoT. I don't know how many uh, of you heard about IoT. It's uh, called what? Uh, Internet of Things. Now, Internet of Things stands for, this definition stands for many, many devices that you may have, or maybe you have, but you don't know it's IoT. Like uh, Nest Cam, it's IoT. Uh, network printer, it's IoT. Camera that uses IP, IP access, it's called also uh, IoT. Also, other implementation is like toaster, refrigerator, smart car. Smart car was also built a few months ago. Um, I don't know if you've seen that. Uh, smart cities is also uh, implementation you know, can we go back of IoT. Real quick? I'm sorry? Can we go back to one thing real quick? Yes. So, speaking from somebody who's been hacked, how do I, and I know they were still in my system, how do I know that they're definitely out of my system? Okay, so the question is, how do you know definitely that they're out of your system? Yes, yes. Okay, uh, this is, a, this is a, 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 a problem to find if they are out of your system. Uh, what you're gonna need to know is to have network analytics, uh, looking at different communication from different endpoints on your com computer network, and to see where, where they are going, what kind of information they may carry. Now, most cases, the information will be encrypted, so you won't be able to see what exactly they are stealing or sending. Uh, in some cases, you can prevent it if the destination is already known as, a, uh, as an attacker, right? Uh, not always, and what you're gonna need to have some, some sort of endpoint detection that will give you analytics about what's going on in terms of activity on the computer, what's, what kind of uh, memory manipulation you have, uh, different things like that. It's not, it's not a simple answer. It's a, it requires a little bit more investigation and uh, probably doing some, some forensics on the computer itself in order to see if there is other, uh, um, you know, other activities that uh, normal tools won't be able to see. A any other questions? Okay, so we'll continue next. Uh, so now, probably already asking what uh, the question is, what can we do about this? How can we protect ourselves? And comes to Sammy's questions again. And I wanna, we already touched some of it uh, with the exercise uh, to know how security works. So now you know where, where are you what, what is the, the starting point and where we want to be, right? This is, 